It's my turn to be the dungeon master, and I want the players to pull off an Ocean's Eleven style heist in the secret archives below a library. So I guess I need to make one. Let's see if we can pull it off today on Tabletop Forge. Just like the real library that I'm inspired by, I'm going to carve in a bunch of archways into my walls. Here I'm using 1 inch thick foam, 3 inch tall ceilings. Let's get to work. In my opinion, one of the biggest strengths of the Hotwire table is the ability to create some kind of design and then slice it into smaller, identical pieces. That's what I'm doing here. I'm taking this one inch sheet, slicing it in half, and I create two identical wall sections that are now half inch wide. I'm slicing these inner pieces a little bit thinner because each of these arches is going to be a sort of recessed alcove. This step was a little bit tedious. I wanted this inner arch to look like individual bricks, so I had to carve uh, out these individual bricks. I only needed the inside and the front face to look like bricks since the rest would be hidden. Um, so I took a, an X-Acto knife, I carved them out, used a ballpoint pen to widen them. It took some work, but I think the final result was well worth it. I'm using a little bit of sandpaper to round off this edge, make it a little bit less sharp. And then we're back to one of the most common things I do. I take a stone, I press it into foam, I create some texture. Check it out. I didn't do a great job of keeping track of which pieces were cut out of which archways, so they didn't all fit back exactly the way they should have. Not a big deal though, I'll fill up any gaps later with some spackling. If you didn't catch it in my last video, I 3D printed some jigs to make some foam pillars. I think these are awesome, the results are great, they're easy to use, I highly recommend them. I needed these walls to fit together neatly in the corners, so I attempted a little miter cut on the hot wire table. It was a little nerve wracking because I was sort of freehanding it, but thankfully I managed not to ruin everything. I used some spackling to fill the gaps, a wet paintbrush to wash away the excess spackling, and then I want to make sure these grout lines are still visible, so I use a little stick to carve them out. I accidentally took this footage in vertical mode, which is annoying, but whatever. I'm just trying to build the base of this. It's about 15 inches by 11 inches in MDF, and then I pasted all these tiles on top of it. And now guess what? I'm creating texture again, this time with some tinfoil. I feel like putting magnets into terrain pieces is a little bit of a joke on the internet. Everybody's always like, oh, you should put magnets in that so it sticks together. And I hope those people are happy because in this project I use magnets to connect the different floors and also to connect the removable walls. I 3D printed some big wooden doors to serve as the main doors to the library, and gluing down these door handles was a little bit finicky, but eventually with some tweezer work, I put them in their place. Here's 
Here you can see the first floor all glued together. I have the doors glued into place and these extra pillars out front are going to be supporting the second story that kind of extends past the first one. And I probably should have textured up these pillars before I glued them into place, but whatever, sometimes you gotta make it work. The walls of the second story are gonna be very similar to the walls of the first story, except instead of the blank alcoves in the archways, I'm gonna use some 3D printed windows. Here I'm laying some flooring on the second floor, and later I'm gonna add some railing that goes around this area. I've had issues 3D printing thin things like railing before, so for this build I ended up just buying some off of Amazon. You'll see it in the final shots at the end. I did receive some comments in my last video about how to fix the warping of my 3D prints. Uh, I do appreciate you guys' feedback, and so please keep those comments coming. For the roof I wanted to spice up the brick pattern a little bit so I did some larger bricks mixed in with some smaller ones, but this big rectangular opening in the middle is going to be for a big skylight. Here I'm just carving in a little recess for the pieces of plastic I'm going to use to uh, simulate the glass in the skylight. I'm building a railing to go around the perimeter of the roof, and I'm using this little foam block to evenly space all of the posts. I cut up some of the pillars to serve as the larger posts on this little fence, and then I cut up my smaller fence to fit in between there. Later I'll glue some miniatures on top of those larger fence posts, and I'll paint them to look like statues. I wanted some way to sort of spice up or embellish the sides of these different floors, so I took these long strips of foam and I glued them right along the center just to add a little bit of an accent. Here we have some epic footage of me playing with my miniature Link. This mini was painted by my five-year-old, I may have helped a little bit, and we accidentally broke his sword off. Here you'll notice a little stone staircase I built to go from the first floor to the second floor, and there's also a little brick room in the back corner that's actually going to be the head librarian's office. The office is accessible only on the second floor, and it will have an elevator that leads down into the secret archives. I've talked about the importance of playability before, so the front walls on both stories are removable, so it's easier to reach inside and move minis around. I didn't build a visible way to get onto the roof, but I'm hoping that that skylight is very tempting for the players and that they'll find a way to get up there. After a coat of black paint and Mod Podge, it's time to add some color. Oh man, painting these bookshelves almost broke me. 
But what is a library without books and a bookshelf? I really hope you guys uh, enjoy and appreciate this build. And, uh, you know, like and subscribe and all that stuff. Just for the bookshelf hell that I put myself through. I ordered some of these colored transparent plastic sheets that I could cut up and serve for the glass and the different windows on the build. Overall this material does work great for glass but I do feel like it smudges and takes fingerprints really easily. If anybody knows anything uh, better to use let me know in the comments and I'll check it out. I left out a few minor details like gluing in the bookshelves, the railings, and the statues because I wanted it to be more of a surprise when you see the final product. So without further ado, here it is. Our druid Old Dirty Dirt and our rogue Cormac McAllister decided to infiltrate the library at night. They climbed up onto the roof, they cut a hole in the glass avoiding the guards, and they were able to climb down to the second story. While they were sneaking around the second story, they realized the Candle Knight statue had come alive down on the first floor and was patrolling that area. Old Dirty Dirt turned into a giant spider and lured the Candle Knight statue away, while Cormac was able to go down and disable some security. They were about to get away without incident when a suit of armor came alive and attacked them, but they were able to avoid the fight and escape without alerting any guards. Overall, I was able to get the players to visit the library three different times, once to case the joint, second time at night to disable some security, and the third time disguised as monks to gain access to the secret archives. If you want to hear more about how the heist went, you can actually listen to our entire D&D sessions on Spotify under Black Flag and Fantasy, which is the name of our podcast. My friend has this awesome gaming space in his garage, we call it the Black Flagon, and uh, I'll probably give you a tour of it at some point. The sessions where I was the dungeon master and we went into the library were these two, three men, a rabbit, and a pile of dirt walk into a library, and then the second one, the old switcheroo. I should warn you, we're adults, we drink, we use foul language, so uh, please don't judge us by that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. This was a big build for me, and I put a lot of time into it. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll catch you next time on Tabletop Forge.